Welcome into the latest edition of Extra Time. Thank you, as always, uh, for your tweets. Trying to organise all my papers here. It's been all go. Uh, first question is not a tweet, but it's for, for you, Stevie. Mm. It was your wife's birthday yesterday. I'm always intrigued as to what gift you got her. Uh-oh. From the heart. <laughs> Me. Me. <laughs> that's not a, a card. That, that, oh, you've got a card. That's an improvement on most years. <laughs> Well, actually, yeah, I was very pleased with myself. Did she so buy it for she. you? She was very pleased with me as well. Uh, well, no, no, no. Who bought it I for know you? That seems strange, but no. Me? Oh, did you? I nipped to it Saturday morning. I gave it one of them. Oh yeah, I need to go and sort my glasses out. I nipped to it and got it. You older? Imagine she's thinking, oh, he's going, he's secretly going out mm -hmm. because she. And what's he going to come back with? Uh huh. Card. <laughs> Definitely from the hey, but from the heart. <laughs> from the gas station, Stevie. Hey, gas station car. Now, How long do you think it took him to pick out the car? He just went. Yeah. Yeah, okay, let's go. No, he uh, went 99 cents. Yeah. That, that, yeah. That, that, you know that yeah. segment there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Clearance aisle. Hey, by the way. <laughs> yes. Hey, do you know how much the card was? Yeah, cards are expensive. Eight dollars. I was like, uh, what? Eight dollars. <laughs> <laughs> did it have what? music in it? I was it? expecting them. A... <laughs> Aye. Oh, oh, you're oh, yeah, dog yeah. Romantic. Wow. Uh, dogs, uh, dogs barking, isn't it? <laughs> Happy birthday to you. <laughs> Eight dollars. I tell you what, I'll be going back. I'll be, uh, I'll be going. Uh, I'll be downgrading for next year. <laughs> Nothing says romantic birthday like dogs barking. <laughs> Happy birthday. <laughs> but it was $8, yeah. so... <laughs> a question to Stevie. As a player, can playing in a rainy weather hey. change the whole football style for a team? It seems like both Liverpool and Manchester City lost their offensive touch. Uh, listen, it depends how much rain's falling. It depends how much is on the on the, the ground. Uh, it depends if there's any wind. I mean, those things can change change a game. Listen, perfect conditions are perfect for for perfect players. You know, it means they can move the ball quickly and they can be accurate with the passing and, and all those things. So when it starts raining and it's cold and the wind, it, it definitely changes certainly how accurate you can be with your passing. Did you like playing in the rain, Stevie? Not particularly. No? No, I didn't. I didn't mind when it was damp. Uh, but I didn't particularly like playing in the rain, no. Ali, fan of the rain? I enjoyed it, to a point. Right. Once you start losing control of the ball or the field is not playing the way that it should, uh, then I, I had an issue with it. Would you fall over more in the rain? Well, I'll have you know that it was not falling <laughs> then, it was drawing foul. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Stevie, did the big matchups in the Premier League uh, lose all their flair as Arsenal United, Chelsea United, City Arsenal, City Liverpool were all boring? Are the managers really trying not to lose instead of winning and taking a safe approach? Look, I, I don't think you can say Liverpool City was boring. Listen, if, if the second first, half if the, you can, if Stevie, it was half. boring. Second half was terrible. Well, I heard you during the show rudely interrupting Gab as well, so I'll do the same as Gab. Could you uh, let me finish, please? Certainly. <laughs> Certainly. So if, if, this, if, the second half, if the second half had been the first and the first had been the second, we would be talking about how brilliant this game was. No, I don't just think we would. We'd just be talking about, usually God, happens. this took an age fact, to get going. I'm so, oh, rubbish. <laughs> we would have said, we would have said, oh, you know what? First half wasn't that great, but you know what? Second half was great and everybody did. Blah, 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 blah. Now what we're talking about is how, how, it, it wasn't boring. It was, it was interesting. It just wasn't oh, as Stevie, exciting as the interest. first half was. How was the second half interesting? Right. What was interesting about it? Hold on. Listen, let me tell you something. You're the guy. You're the guy who wants to watch Leeds United drawn 4-4. Remember a few weeks ago we had this argument. You were like, "Oh, it was great. It was fantastic." Like 16 million goals and people were making mistakes all over the shop. And then you get a sec you get a great first half. You get a second half that yes, it's a little cagey. It's a little kind of a chess match, and people are careful. And now you're like. Oh, how boring is that? Stevie, did anyone even have a shot I mean, target in typical. the second half? I want to see, I would like to see a shot. Typical. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? Nice, maybe a shot, I say. Typical of the new generation. <laughs> you just want everything like that. 
No patience. <laughs> oh, but what if it was the second half or the first half? <laughs> <For> the fr <laughs> and the cutting edge analysis, everyone said. Uh. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thanks, dude. Yeah, I like oh, that. <laughs> do you. Dan. Dan's acting do like you a millennial or something. What, sorry, Stevie. <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> Do you agree with Klopp on the need for five subs, Ali? No. I, I mean, I understand initially why we were doing this and the circumstances that we were in back then, and maybe those circumstances haven't changed as much as we would have wanted around the world. But at some point, I think you had to get back to the things that, that, that we were used to before. And, and a sense of normalcy, for every league, or in this case the Premier League, is three subs. It's what we've used in the past. I think it's going to push teams, I think it's going to stretch teams, but it is the same for everybody. It's not like Liverpool only gets three subs and Manchester City gets five subs. I, I, I really think that this is one where you just have to manage your team accordingly because everybody's playing under the same rules. This uh, Alexander-Arnold uh, injury, of course, sparked this after the game, but Van Dijk didn't get injured because mm -hmm. there weren't enough subs. He got injured because he got kicked. Stevie. Uh, and you are absolutely correct. I'm, I'm, I must be going a little soft. I'm beginning to come towards it right now because, because there is a lot of games and it's not, it's not that there's three games a week because, listen, when I was playing and since I was playing to now, all the best teams have been playing three games a week at times. But I think right now, and, and, and carrying on into the next couple of months, every single team is going to be doing it every three days, whether it's with the international team or, or the domestic side. So I would suggest that while this is going on, until we get back to normal, I wouldn't have a problem with the five subs. It does give the bigger teams and the, the bigger squads with the better players in it an advantage. But then, you know, the teams that the teams that don't have such a big squad are going to find it even harder because their players are going to be absolutely dead on the feet. So, right now, during this pandemic, during playing every three days for the foreseeable future, I would change it. But I think once we get back to normal, you you get back to normal. You get back to three subs. Here's a, the one thing that I would say is, when you're making five substitutions, it's nearly half your team that you're changing out on the field. It, 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 it changes the game dramatically. It, and yes, it benefits, so it's convenient for Liverpool. It's convenient for Manchester City. But it's not convenient for West Brom. It's not convenient for some of these other teams because five substitutions for you is not the same as five substitutions for the other group. Mm. The, what you have available as Manchester City is not the same as whatever other teams have available. So. While West Brom may be struggling to find, okay, yeah, we need to make some changes. Okay, who am I going to bring? Oh, that guy, am I going to bring that guy? The fifth player off the bench for West Brom is at a lower level than the fifth player off the bench for Liverpool. Plus five substitutions doesn't guarantee no injuries. Kimmich for Bayern Munich. Yeah. We saw Ansu Fati as well yeah. for Barcelona this weekend. Uh, be interesting to see, as Stevie said, whether or not Klopp and um, Pep Moaning will make any difference. Um, have Leicester gone under the radar, Stevie, so far this season? How impressive have their performances been, given that they are missing key players such as Pereira and Ndidi? No, I don't think they've gone under the radar whatsoever. We, we saw last, certainly the first, just after the first half of last season, how good they were or how good they can be. Of course, they kind of fell off a cliff towards the end. So uh, the way they're playing at times is no surprise to anybody. You know, they've got they've got a real good mix. You know, the likes of Schmeichel in goal, Johnny Evans, you know, Vardy up front, you know, right up in the middle. And then they've got some great young players. Uh, you know, Fafana has appeared from nowhere at centre-back, uh, as is Justin at right-back. Um, Barnes. You know, who's probably more of an attacking mm. midfielder, got lots of pace. You know, Telemans. Oh. Um, you know, they've got a lot of good players, and not even my good old friend Madison as well. So they they haven't gone under the radar. I think the only question that that we all ask ourselves is, can they last the season? Because we know they can be good, as they were last year. We know they can be good because they've already started well. 
but can they last? That's the that's the thing we don't know. Is Arsenal heading for the Europa League again? <laughs> oh yeah, first class ticket. <laughs> Stevie, do you need me to talk again, or can I just nod my head? Uh, yes, yeah, yes, yes, yeah. Yeah, no, they, they, listen, we, they need they need to take the next step. You know, Ateta's got them from there to there. He's got them organised, he's got them on a, on a real good plane. He's made a couple of good signings, particularly party. Now they have to take the next step where they can actually dominate. Because I don't remember the last time they dominated anybody. You know, they sit tight and break and it's they've got pace with Obama Yang. Um, but... But actually, the, the, they've gone kind of stale. We, we know exactly what they're going to do now. Um, they need to take a step up. Dan? Yes. Did you happen to notice? So Stevie told us that Arteta has taken this team from here yes. to here. Yep. And then he said they need to take a next step, and then he went back down this way. <laughs> we never really did take the next step. Never, never went up. Did I go from there? No, well, oh, hold a sec. No, no, you're mixing this up. I've actually got to let me arm go at some stage. That's it. Unless you want me to settle it's that for the, for the next 10 minutes. you got so you got to climb above that. Go. You got, next right. step is above it. See? Stevie, with the penalties that were called today in the Premier League, and as much as you guys have said you hate it when defenders defend with the arms behind their back, isn't it obvious for them to start defending with their arms back there to avoid those kind of calls? No. No. Absolutely not. Do you, what do you think we did previously? You think this is, do you think this is something new? Stevie, people are saying that that Gomez penalty would never have been a penalty, say, back in your day. Huh? <laughs> See, that's absolute garbage. Because people that said that probably weren't even born then. Right, Don Hutchinson, for example, you. saying it. If I, was go, if, I was jo, if I was Joe Gomez, if I was Joe Gomez... And that happened to me, and the ball was coming from 20 yards. I would not have argued one iota. Not one iota. Okay. Um, I'll tell you what, we're going to talk. Uh, we're, we're, I'm going to talk about Barcelona with you. Okay. But I feel in the time that you've got, you're going to give me the answer on Barcelona. Stevie, can you go and get the birthday card? Because I think people want to see yes. it. It's yes. only a microphone that's attached, then, mm -hmm. isn't it? So if we talk Barcelona, <laughs> go and get the birthday card. <laughs> Perfect. Right. Okay. Um, Ali. Yes. Are you serious? Yeah, definitely. Go and get it. I want to see it. <laughs> what could possibly go wrong? Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> don't, don't worry. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> uh, time to move on from Griezmann, Ali. Oh, she's got, she's got to download again. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> the behind the don't scenes this, look. Don't get this on Sky. <laughs> uh, 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 it's been time, but... If you base it on yesterday's first 45 minutes from Antoine Griezmann, you actually would have to say that the best of Antoine Griezmann, coincidentally, happens when Lionel Messi is not on the field. Yes, he missed chances. Yes, he missed a penalty. But he was actually dynamic. He was creating opportunities. He was running at people, running past people, passing for goals and so on and so forth. So his individual performance in the first 45 minutes was really good. Guess what happened? Lionel Messi comes on the field and then it's a disappearance right. act again. He did score. Well, and you know how he did score? Because Messi missed that ball. <laughs> well, yeah, he's pretending he missed, it was a dummy. Yes, he missed. Yes, it's a good miss by Lionel Messi. You know, we go back a year ago and actually Antoine Griezmann, when Lionel Messi wasn't playing against Betis, the same team that they played yesterday, Scores a couple of goals, assists. So it's either they play against Betis every weekend or Lionel Messi does not tower. If you put those things together, then Griezmann is the guy for you. Should we see if he's back? Let's well. have a look. Is, is Stevie back <laughs> with the... Yes! Ah! Here he comes. Ready? Oh, uh -huh. I want to wish you a happy birthday. Ready? Let's get the dogs. <laughs> 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 there you go. Hey, I, I wouldn't even imagine everything and anything. Eight, this was even better. Isn't that amazing. Of all the cards, Steve, you thought, yes, right that's the one. <laughs> this is the one that's going to make the statement. <laughs> <laughs> if there isn't a card that shows my yeah. love and appreciation for you, this one is it. <laughs> oh, God. This is it.
It, it's... Hey, that was the second one I looked at. <laughs> what was the first one? <laughs> Actually, the first one that... What? Didn't quite... F I wasn't feeling it with the first one. No, <laughs> and you felt it with that one. <laughs> What a lucky lady. Uh, is Stevie going to moan Excuse about me. Lazaro's... <laughs> is Stevie going to moan about Lazaro's amazing overhead kick? Oh. If you didn't see this, it's in the... Um... <laughs> It's in the Gladbach game. I'm trying to remember which game it was. Oh, it. Yeah, yeah, an incredible scissor kick. Very similar to that of Olivier Giroud, which when he scored, Stevie said, uh, well, he yeah. was just lucky. It's just a gamble. It's a gamble. Stevie, mm -hmm. same rhetoric with this. Oh, yes. But what? It's brilliant. You can it's amazing. Back again. To pull off that skill. <laughs> hey, if you enjoyed it, that's good. I don't have a problem. If anybody thinks that, that's fantastic. <laughs> I just don't happen to think that. Oh you prefer hey. to watch the second half of City against okay. whoever it was, well, Liverpool. If the standard for greatness for Stevie is based upon the, his choice for <laughs> birthday car, then I think, you know, we ought to no. reconsider asking him what great Control. is. <laughs> Stevie, thoughts on the Scotland qualifier against Serbia? Are you excited? Of course, this for a place in the Euros' first Oof. major tournament since, nine, since 98. Yeah. Uh, well, I haven't, I haven't been inviting them to be over for a celebration. Put it that way. Oh, mm. I, I don't see us having a chance. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Serbia away, one I have game. To apologise. I mean, I'm actually scared. It's going to be a, a, a bit of a hiding. I'll be honest. Oh, so. so I'm not feeling confident. So, let me, let me <laughs> read. You read, maybe, let you me maybe read. have. Uh, I'm going to read between the lines here. I'm going to guess he's not excited. Are you doing that game, Ali? Are you doing... No, I am doing uh, Georgia and North Macedonia. Uh, final question. <laughs> How often does Ali completely shave his head? Why would anyone want to know that? How often? I would say about every six weeks or so. Maybe. Every six weeks? Yeah. There we go. <laughs> maybe, maybe we should shorten that period. <laughs> once oh. a month? We should go once a month? Okay, well, that's it. Um, Stevie, one Is that more... a Twitter poll? That's it. Stevie, one more time. Surely I think we, we need that uh, before we say goodbye. Can we hear the dogs again? It's about that time to shave my yeah. head again, by the way. Here it comes. Uh -huh. <laughs> Here it comes. <laughs> yes. Well, happy birthday, Mrs. Nickel. Uh, congratulations. <laughs> what a moment for us all. <laughs> we'll be back tomorrow for more. <laughs> oh, you... Oh. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.